Guitar practice session 10, 14, 24. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, hoping that it will generate a routine, help me verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others working on similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the things that I am doing here, noting that I do think presenting something as though someone is listening, even if no one is, is useful because it helps us to kind of articulate what we're trying to learn in a way that we might not otherwise do. So if you want to be doing the same thing, don't worry about plagiarism or anything. We'll give you the, the worksheet. You can do whatever you want uh, with the worksheet, adjust it and make your own presentations if you so choose uh, with it or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, note that uh, we do have presentations on how to manipulate the worksheet, which is actually a great practice for Excel as well. But for minor manipulation, uh, you don't need to know much in order to, to manipulate the worksheet. We're going to be looking at it from the perspective to navigate around the fretboard as easily as possible as we're holding the guitar from behind uh, the guitar so that everything is orientated the same way. So if you pressed your guitar strings on the screen, we would have the heavy string on top, the one closest to the ceiling, top to bottom, left to right, orientated as you are from behind the guitar. My guitar will also even be turned around so it'll look like I'm left-handed in an attempt, once again, to try to see everything going the same way. So you're not spending all of your mental energy flipping around the fretboard, putting the bottom string on the top string in your mind to try to understand what is going on so that we can spend our time trying to learn learning the shapes on basically the fretboard. So that's going to be the idea. We're going to be looking at what I would call shape number five. We're looking at what I would call mode number three. We're going to look at their relative positions. We're going to look at the what I would call the relative modes and then the intervals. And we're also going to be every time we go to the relative positions within the shape, building a chord on that shape, which is going to take a lot more of our time. This is kind of a new thing, so I'm kind of struggling around uh, with it right now. This isn't part of my normal kind of routine. And I'm trying to add to my routine by saying that I, how can I visualize what I can build off this chord? Now, remember that if I'm in the Phrygian and I'm on the second of the Phrygian, for example, the question is on that F, what kind of chord can I build off of it? Well, if I know the related position to the major scale as my Rosetta Stone, I could say, well, that, that's going to be the, the fourth. So that's one thing I could do. If I can determine that, then I could say, well, the one, four, five are usually major chord constructions. Beyond that, however, I'd like to be able to build a more complex chord using the seven, you know, the nine, the 11, and 13. And the question is, well, which of those do I use? What are the intervals related to those other items? Normally, when we say what a chord is, we explain the intervals based on like the major and the minor, saying it's the, you know, it's the major seven or dominant seven or the 11 for a major versus a minor or whatever, right? So I can get into more of that uh, later. I, I can use more work on that on all of the naming systems for the different chords as well. But what I'd like, those naming systems don't help me so much to know whether or not those uh, intervals, those chords fit into the same scale that I'm in. And what I'd like to come in is with my own internal naming system so that, so that I know exactly kind of what I'm doing, right? So in other words, if, I, if I'm in the Phrygian and I go to the second of the Phrygian, I know that that's actually the, the fourth mode, otherwise known as the Lydian mode. I know I would make a major scale from that mode, uh, but I, I don't really know the other intervals based on it simply being a major scale. What I want to start to call it is the, it's a Lydian mode. It's, it's, a, it's a mode number four, it's a, it's a Lydian chord. I'm going to try to think of it as a Lydian chord, right? A Lydian chord, if I only play the one, three, five, is just a major chord. But if I name it as a, as a Lydian chord, then, then I know all of the intervals for the Lydian can be constructed from it. I know the distinctive interval that's going to be an issue, that being the fourth of the Lydian. And then, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll determine, okay, there it is. 
there's the Lydian, and then I'm going to go down to the Lydian, making it the first, so that I can see all the intervals from the the first through the seventh, as well as those same interval names in terms of the the names of a chord, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and then try to build all the different ways that we can construct a three note chord from it, a normal triad, as well as adding the the seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen, which I'm kind of a little a little messy on in part because my guitar string broke and I don't have any other I, I don't have any strings on me so I had to use the mini guitar which I'm not, not totally used to so kind of <laughs> bear with me my fingers are missing my pick is missing because the guitar is lower on my lap so uh, but I get used to it I'm going to get used to it. I'm going to get some new strings too so then uh, so then we'll go to the next one I'll go back up here and then we go to the mixolydian same kind of thing so now I'm like okay here's the distance of the mixolydian it's a minor third away from the the root but then if i go to the mixolydian i could call it a major chord that i would construct from it but i'd like to call it a mixolydian chord right if it's a mixolydian triad then it's the same as a major chord with a with a major third but if i say it's a mixolydian chord with a seven that's the one that has the dominant seven in it because the mixolydian is the fifth of the relative major scale See, that's why I'm trying, so I'm, I'm trying, I'm a little sloppily trying to come up with my own internal kind of naming system for the chords, which gives me a little bit more information, not just about the intervals of the chords based on the major and minor scales, but based on the mode that I'm looking at, because I know the mode will be in the same key. All the intervals of the Mixolydian mode for the G, of course, will be in the same key as the Phrygian. So I'm going to think of it as a Mixolydian chord, which would be a major chord, major third, plus all the same intervals for a major scale, except for the difference of the Mixolydian to the major, that being the seventh in terms of the Mixolydian. So that's what I'm trying to do. I, we'll see. I'm, I'm still a little sloppy with it, uh, but I think, I think it has potential. So I might confuse people, including myself, on the way. Continuing on with what I would call shape number five, looking at what I would call mode number three, that being the Phrygian mode, remembering that we're using an absolute mode numbering system based on the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode. So if we jump on up to the major scale or Ionian mode, we've got the relative positions on the left, seven notes out of 12. We have the actual notes on the right playing in the key of C with the no sharps or flats. Usually the next thing that people learn from a practical standpoint is that we build major chords on the one, four, five notes. And on the two, three, and six, we build minors on the seventh. You have that diminished. But beyond that, I'd like to learn the actual mode names and apply the mode numbering system based on the major scale because that will help to orientate us even as we go through the other scales in such a way that even as I switch through the different modes, I can still see the relative uh, positions. And I'm even going to add to that a little bit by thinking about the chords that we construct now that I'm going to start thinking about chords that are beyond three note triad chords as basically a modal chord. So I want to get into the naming convention in essence of the chord, which is a little different than a standard naming convention, a standard naming convention, not typically telling you exactly what mode the chord is constructed from, which makes sense because most of the time, or you can imagine situations where we construct a chord that has notes from multiple modes in it. So we're typically going to be naming a particular chord based off of the intervals related to the major or the minor keys. However, when I'm trying to learn what's happening within the fretboard, as I move from uh, one note to another note, and I want to build a chord within it, it would be easy and useful for me to then think about the chord that I'm building as the, that modal chord, which will still be a major or a minor with a major or minor third, but will also give me the distinctive notes that are in the different modes. So that's what I'm going to try to start building on here. We also have the intervals here. These are the major intervals. Remembering learning the intervals is going to help us to build the scale in one way, but also it's going to help us to think about building the chords 
because we can think about the chords as basically a set of intervals. And now we're applying that concept to building chords within the scales, which gets a little bit wonky, a little bit confusing. So we're just going to try to keep all that straight in our mind as we walk through this. The way to learn the intervals is usually to learn the major intervals, then the relative minor intervals, which is the Aeolian mode, and then to learn the in the modes that are related to the major and the minor, meaning compare the Lydian and Mixolydian to the Ionian or major, comparing the Dorian and the Phrygian to the related minor or uh, Aeolian. And if we do that, there's only going to be one interval difference. So if we learn it systematically like that, we start to get down these modes and the intervals of them. I'm evidence of that. I've been doing this for a while now, and I'm starting to see more and more, you know, the were the inter what intervals we're talking about here. Uh, so that's going to be the idea. We're on the Phrygian now, and the Phrygian is is going to be, here's the relative positions on the Phrygian, one through seven. There's still seven notes. We have the same notes because we're looking at the relative Phrygian, meaning no sharps or flats, but instead of starting at C, we're starting at E, and we're constructing the intervals based on that E. Now notice when I think about that in terms of a scale, we're naming each of the intervals based on that root note, and there's only seven of them, right? We got a perfect first, we got this, the uh, minor second in this case, the minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, and major seven. Those are the same things that we use, of course, to construct the actual chord, which is built out this way. This is the same, the same scale, the Phrygian scale, except when we build the chord, we choose every other note. So we start with the one, three, five, and the threes being minor. That's why it's a minor mode. And then we go to the seven. There's only seven notes, so it gets confusing here because then we go to the nine, the 11, and the 13, skipping all the even numbers. But the nine, the 11, 13, for all practical purposes on the guitar are the even numbers. So it's the same scale, right? We've got the, here's the E, and then we've got the two is a nine, and that's the F, and then we've got the three, the three, and then we've got the, the four. Uh, the four has been skipped, but that's the 11, right? And then we've got the five, uh, the, the fifth here. The fifth uh, is, is going to be here, and then we have the sixth, which is the C, which has been skipped, but is the 11th. Uh, uh, wait a sec. The, the, the sixth is the 13 and the and then we've got the the seven which is the seven so let me do that again we've got the one and then we've got the two which is equivalent to the nine boom we've got the three uh which is going to be the third note in the scale and then we've got the 11 which is equivalent to the fourth right and then we've got the uh, and then we've got the fifth, which is the fifth note in the scale. And then instead of the sixth, we have the 11th, uh, which is equivalent to the fourth note in the scale. And then we have the fifth, which is uh, the fifth note in the scale, of course. And then the sixth is equivalent to the 13th note in the scale. And then we have the seventh. So I just want to keep reiterating that so that I can build, so I can think of that as building my chords uh, from whatever mode that I'm in. All right, that's going to be the idea. So we have then the, the intervals here based on the Phrygian. What are those intervals compared to the, the minor scale, basically comparing to the minor? Well, we have one different note compared to the minor. That's the minor second. So the Phrygian is even more minor than the main minor because it has all minors, even a minor second uh, within it. So let's let's go through it. I'm going to play uh, it up uh, here, maybe in in this position, just so I can see those. Uh, this is what I would call the Phrygian shape up top, position number four, you might call it, just to see those intervals. So if we went from the first to the second, we've got that's the funny interval. That's a two note away, I mean a one note away minor second instead of the major has a two note away major second. And then we've got a three note away 
on the fridge. And by the way, I'm in the smaller guitar because my string broke. So I've got the the mini here, Taylor. Uh, anyways, that's a three note away. Uh, minor third. The three here, this outside three means it's a third. Minor third means it's three notes away. But I'm going to reiterate that by adding the three to tell me it's three notes away because we lose that on the guitar oftentimes. And then we've got a what I would call a five note away perfect fourth. So the perfect fourth is the same in the main major and the main minor. And so five note away perfect fourth. We've got the seven note away perfect fifth, which is the same on the main major and main minor. Seven note away perfect fifth. And then we've got the eight note away minor six. So we have a proper minor six here because it's a minor mode in the Phrygian. And then we've got a, uh, a 10 note away minor seven. Okay, so those are gonna be our <clears throat> intervals that we'll be taking a look at. I'm gonna be in <clears throat> what I call shape number five. I call it shape number five because if I generically call this shape number one, which a lot of people do, then this is gonna be behind it, shape number five. And so that's what we're gonna be on here. Now you also might call it uh, <clears throat> from, the, from just naming the top note in the shape, you might call it just the, the mixolydian shape because if I played from this G, that would be the related mode of mixolydian. I'd be playing, if I just play that scale, I'm basically playing G mixolydian. So I could call it the mixolydian shape, but we're not gonna be playing in mixolydian. We wanna be playing in Phrygian. So I wanna start down here on the E. So then, so the next, but before I get there, notice that we can also call it the re, on the caged system, the related shape is a C. So if I look at the C major, and I see that that's an A-shaped chord, so I could call it an A-shape position, right? It's an A-shaped position uh, that I could call it that. And, uh, and remember that if you use this caged system, you wanna first fit that A-shape on the related major into the, the five-note pentatonic shape and then add the other two notes. Otherwise, that A-shape will fit into more than one of the five seven note positions right okay and then so that's going to be that and then the question will be well how do i know if where my e is right or where my phrygian part is if i'm going to be playing in the phrygian well one way would be well if i know that this g the top of the scale is mixolydian and i know that the mixolydian is the fifth of the relative major i could just count up until i get back to the to the one of the relative major or eight, right? So I could say that if this is the fifth, five, six, seven, eight, so that means the C is gonna be the eight. And then I could say this is gonna be one, two, three. And that would bring be the third is what I'm looking for because the third is the Phrygian mode representing the relative position of the Phrygian to the major scale. Another way I could look at it is I can look for this, I can look for it by shapes. I could say, well, what is this, what is this, uh, thing look like if I played it out this position I notice I have my box right here I'm always looking for my box that gives me my my house analogy and in the house analogy <clears throat> you've got the the major house because it's C major and the top of the box looking up towards the ocean and then the Phrygian on the box is going to be on the basement bottom right because it's the one with the minor heavy minor second the, it's the metal guy in the basement with that heavy second. So that so that's another way uh, that I could find it. So that's going to be our starting point for that. So then I can I can look at my scale a couple different ways. I can say I want to look at it from. I can build my scale by shape. I can just see well there's my shape and say that and then I can also well let me do that in a second. Then I can also do it by interval meaning I'm gonna look at all the intervals related to this E, which will construct the same shape, or I can look at it by formula of holes and half steps, meaning the whole half step progression note to note will all come up with the same shape as long as I'm using the same rules in that I'm gonna stay within these five frets and I'm never gonna expand beyond uh, th 
uh, four frets at a time, right? And that's our rules to stay within here. Otherwise, we could do a three note per string or a two note per string, and we can do the same scale with a different shape, but we want to stay in this shape. So if I did it by shape, I can say, well, I'm starting here at the bottom of the box and say I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that's by shape. And then I could say that I'm going to do it by, uh, let's do it by by formula, holes and half steps, just to look at where my holes and half steps are. Remember that they're always going to be in the box. So I'm starting at the bottom of the box now. So if I if I go to the next one up, that's going to be where our half step is. So right off the bat, we've got the half step, which is a different interval or a different half step than the related minor scale. And because that's the only different interval, the half the, the step out of it going from the two to the three is also going to be different than the minor scale getting us back to the normal interval so you got a, a weird half step instead of a whole step into the second and then a weird whole step from the second to the third uh that's going to get us back to the normal uh the normal third now here so now we've got a whole step from the second to third and then when i'm at the bottom of the box Notice there's two notes in between before I get back to another box. If I'm within this shape, these five note shapes, it's always the same for these shapes if you're staying within these five shapes. So, so then I can say, okay, that means that from two to three is a whole step, from three to four, so from three to four is going to be a whole step because that's pinky to pointer, from four to five is a whole step whoops what happened i don't know what happened where was i uh one to <laughs> one to two three four five so now we're on this b and then we're on from five to six is going to be our half step we're back at the top of the box five to six <laughs> is a half step okay i totally messed up my fingers are all messed up here we're on one two three four five five to six is a half step and then we're going to go from six to seven uh which is a whole step which looks like it should be a half step but because it's in the fault line it's a whole step and then we're going from seven back to eight or one, which is going to be a whole step. So I also note that with my analogies of the house analogy or the barbell analogy, I can break my five string instrument plus another string that has an added E into a two string, two string, one string shape within these shapes, which will always be the same in all of the five shapes since we're breaking them out using the same basic rules. And then we can also break it out into what I would call the pentatonic shape, a three string shape and a two string shape. So that means the house analogy is gonna have this shape, the, the house double stop box, and then it's gonna have the box double stop. I mean, I'm sorry, the box double stop, the double stop box, here's the box which has been shifted up. And then the two note per string, what I call flat or hamburger. And then if I'm going from this, this seven note shape down to the five note pentatonic i remove this top left corner and bottom right corner of the box the top left corner is always going to be no matter what scale no matter what scale we're in even if we weren't in the key of c if we're in the key of g it's still going to be the uh locrian mode and this f is always going to be the lydian mode which would always be the ones that are removed if you're going to a five note pentatonic with regards to the hamburger barbell shape, I'm going to copy this over here and put it uh, over here. So we might be able to see the hamburger a little bit more clearly. You because now you you see now wait a sec that's not where it goes it goes right here. So there's going to be our hamburger shape, and so so within so within the hamburger shape, 
our we're on the left side of the barbell. We don't, I call this the barbell. We only play the left and right of the barbell. We don't play the middle if we're only playing a five note pentatonic. And then we would add the middle ones if we're playing the full shape. And then with regards to the hamburger, we're on the top right of the hamburger. Okay, so my fingering's a little bit weird. I still kind of getting used to, I've been playing the same guitar for a long time. This guitar is a little bit wonky for me to get, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a change from what I've been playing lately. So, so bear with me. If my, I'm blaming that, I'm blaming that if my fingers are off, uh, like they, like if I mess up here, even though it's probably me, but let's go ahead and do this again. So now we're going to go, now let's do it by interval. So we're going to say from the first to the second is going to be, so here's my E one to two for the Phrygian. You've got a one note away uh, minor second. So that's going to be the funny interval. One note away, minor second. And uh, uh, what's the inverse? 12 minus one, which would be 11 note away, uh, major 11. The inverse of a minor is a major. So if I played it this way, we've got a one note away, minor second. If I went from the F back to the E, I have an 11 note away, major uh uh major seven and it's important to know the inverses as we saw because if i build chords leaning up this way the inverse will help me to kind of build the chord what does the inverse mean i can double check it by saying if i go here count up 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 i get to the e so it's kind of a circle I also know that if I'm on the second, if I'm on the second of the Phrygian, if I go up to the major, remember that I'm on the Phrygian, which is the third mode. That means if I was on the first of the modes, if I was on Ionian, it's two steps down. Or in other words, I can say three minus one is the two steps. That's why the formula could be three minus one is those two steps plus the second of the Phrygian means I'm on the fourth of the relative major, meaning, right, so now I'm on the fourth of the relative major, which I know if I know I would build a major chord from because the one, four, five would be major chord constructions, right? And beyond that, though, I also know that it's the Lydian. It's going to be the fourth mode, which is the Lydian, which is going to give me more detail. Where does the Lydian live in our house analogy? In the house, here's going to be our house and it's in the back, uh, I'm sorry, it's in the front of the house looking towards the ocean because it's a major key, but it is the one that we would remove if we're going from a seven note major down to the five note uh, pentatonic scale in terms of the barbell analogy. It's in the middle or the handle part of the barbell is where we're looking now. If I was to build a chord from it, this what I want to think about it is as not just a major chord, but I want to think of it as I'm going to start. This is my new thing. I'm kind of trying to put in my mind. I want to think about it as a Lydian chord. So, right. So I'm in the key of Phrygian and I'm going to the two chord of Phrygian, which is a Lydian chord. You might say, well, why, why would I want to do that? Because the Lydian chord is still just going to be a major chord. It's going to have a major third to it. But if I call it a Lydian chord, that's going to tell me it not only has a major third, but it has all the intervals that I could reach to uh, for the Lydian, which includes the distinctive interval for the Lydian, which is which is the fourth interval, which is kind of easy to remember because it has a, it's the fourth, because if I call this an absolute mode number four, it's the fourth interval of Lydian, which is an augmented fourth, which is the same distance as a flat fifth. So in other words, these, these notes right here are, are once again going to build the Lydian scale and I can build, if I use any of these notes to build my chord from, I can think of them by, by distance, by interval. And that those, all those notes will be in the same key as all of these notes because the Lydian is a related mode. And just, I also just want to keep in my mind the idea that I don't have to play in the same key, right? Another thing that would be common is if I'm playing a chord like in, in Phrygian that has like a two in it or something, 
that's that's funny, right? Because it has the distinctive second that has a minor second. I could go from Phrygian to Phrygian, and that would be a parallel, right? So I could say I'm going to play the the one the, a Phrygian chord and then go to, uh, in E, right? And then maybe I go to A Phrygian after that. That still might work because because you're playing something that's completely parallel to each other. So you're going to, to, to this note. I'm still I would be playing maybe a, a minor second that doesn't fit into the into the same chord, but because it's the same shape, everything is parallel. That might work. We see that most clearly like in the blues situation where we're always playing like what you might think of as the fifth of the blues, but it's really you might also think of it as a mixolydian where you're adding the minor seven, right? I'm adding a minor seven to the blues. Here's an A minor seven. If I if if I if I moved if I moved that that shape up, then if I keep the same minor seven, like I play the one four five with that same uh, minor seven, like I move it down here. sounds still kind of cool or sounds like it fits together I think that's because all those shapes are parallel to each other even though they don't fit all in the same chord the, but the other way we can do it is we can try to say we can we can stay in the same notes by saying I'm gonna use the intervals that are in the same key which is easiest to remember I feel like if you name the chord by the mode that you're in so I'm, I'm going from the one which is the Phrygian and then I'm going to the two of the Phrygian which means I'm going to play in essence a Lydian a Lydian chord if it's a Lydian chord and you only play the one three five three notes then you're going to play a minor I mean you're going to play a major chord but if you add it if you add if you start getting more fancy in it then you want to know which of the intervals are going to fit into the key that you're in and with the Lydian, when you get to that fourth, you've got to know that that's the funny interval that if you want to stay in the same key, you've got to do the augmented fourth. That's why I think it might be useful. So to build that, I'm actually going to go to the Lydian. So here's the Lydian down here. And that gives us the one, three, five, which are mapped out and color coded. And then we can say we could build off of that. So I'm going to say, OK, oh, man, I'm just kind of a mess today. You're always a mess. All right, that was uncalled for. I'm not always a mess. I'm going to say, if we're on this F, so let's build a chord. Now, if I built a triad, I'm going to call this again. I'm going to call this uh, the Lydian, a Lydian uh, chord, right? And now I can, I can see it this way. These are the notes from the chord shape, but they're going to be the same notes and the same intervals over here now because I've skipped down to the Lydian mode it's just that we have this 9 11 and 13 when I think about chords which are equivalent to the 2 uh, 4 and the 6 so if I go to this F and I usually I would build my chord like downwards like this so most people think of building a bar chord so if I built my bar chord here's my power chord there's the 5 and then we're looking for the uh, the three, which would be there, and that would be like an E shape. This guitar feels so much different. That would be like an, an uh, I'm sorry, that would be like a D shape because I could play it up here. Okay, so so there's that, and then I can start to think about okay. Well, what if I wanted to add the uh, the seven to it? So I'm like, okay, I want to add the seven. So I can say that's going to be the E. So it's going to be uh, right here if I want to add the seven. Now the seventh of the Lydian, because it's a major mode, and the seventh is not the distinctive factor. It's just going to be a major seven right so so we're gonna so i can do this bar it off and you get that seven in there and so i could say could so here's the seven interval right here it's it's a 
I'm sorry, here's the seven, an 11, it's an 11 note away uh, major seven. Does that make sense? If I count it up, it'd be five, 10 or 10, because of the kink in the tuning, five, 10, and then 11. So that makes sense, that's the 11. And then I could say, okay, so if I, so, so I could say this, so I might, I'm gonna try to think of that in my mind as a Lydian with a seven, <laughs> which is just a major seven, right? But if I say it's a Lydian, I know that I have a major seven within it because the Lydian is, has, the, that's a major seven. That's what I'm trying to work out in my mind. All right, so then I'm gonna to go to the nine. The nine is equivalent to the, uh, uh, the two, right? So the nine is equivalent to the two here. And so, so the second, obviously I would have like my G here. I could always say, well, I've got like, if I was going from shape to shape, I could go up to, to here and be like, okay. I can do I could do something like that, but that's not playing like at the same time. So another way I can get my two is I can I can say where's another two? I have an open G. That's kind of cheating over here. So I've got my open G. So I could let go of my uh, my three, which I hate to do. I lose the three, or I lose the fifth. If I lose the fifth and I go back to my G, I could play it like that. Wait a sec. Then I got this open B that's playing out, which is which is the open B's an eleven. If I if I had to reach that, it would almost be reachable on the MIDI, at least. It's kind of a tough one to reach. Uh, I have another G up here, so I could I could be like, here's the F, doo -doo. and so I've got the and then so then i could drop the so if i go up there then i've got i could drop the third again which again i hate to do but i could do that now here this is kind of interesting because i do have a third back here it's an open and so even with if i if i leave that open then i can add the two there so that's interesting. All right, let's go to the to the eleven, which is equivalent to uh, to the to the uh, four. So now I'm going to say back to my normal fingering. So now I'm going to say I want to play a Lydian eleven, right? <laughs> and the eleven is just going to be a major. It'll be a major eleven, otherwise known as a uh, a major four. Wait, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be an augmented. So when I say that's the funny one. So if I say I want to say it's a Lydian eleven <laughs> that I'm gonna be making, that's equivalent to the four, and the four has the has that augmented six note away augmented fourth. So now, so if I'm on this F, that's equivalent to the most people probably see it as a flat fifth. So that would be like right here. That's like that diminishy one. So it's right there. So if I, I could play that and lose the fifth and then play like that. So that's the distinctive one right there. And so we have that. And then I could say I could I can't add that third and that B. I could play it like this. I could say I grab it here and then here. So I'm gonna go, okay, let's go here. So now I've got the B. Why did I want the B? Because that's the 11. I don't need the 11, really. I want the well, yeah, that's the, that's what I do want. I want the 11. Here's the root. Okay. All right. 
and I still have a finger that I, I can use out here. So I could pick up the D, which would be the 13. So now I'm, I'm like, all right, I might as well put this other finger like there, because I got it handy here. Boom, 13. Or I can pick up the nine, which is below that. This one, the G, with that finger. So that's gonna be a tensiony kind of sound. All right, let's do the let's do the uh, 13, which is equivalent to the six. So if I say this is a Lydian 13, it's what I'm just gonna try to keep in my mind because then I know it's gonna be, that's not the funny interval, so it's gonna be the same as the major. It's gonna be equivalent to the six, which is a nine note away major six. So usually when I think about the six, I'm thinking like back here, I'm usually going, like back here so i'm like it would be here but now it's up here because it's a because of the the fault line between these two strings so i have that and then i could grab maybe the right behind it i could grab this third so there's the third so i could do something like that Could, I could alternate from here to here. Yeah, let's keep it at that. All right, let's try to lean backwards this time. So now I'm going to say I'm leaning back. So the backwards lean would be here. So here's the one, three, five. So if I played a Lydian chord just a triad it would be the same as the major one three five the five looks like it's up shifted up one because of the fault line between these two one three five and then i think i've done a lot of the alterations already so i could say if i wanted to add uh the seven here the e so that's gonna be i could try to reach up to that one right i already did that so let's just keep it, let's keep it at that. Uh, I could then say, what if I want to build it in, going upwards? I could say, there's going to be the five. How do I know that? Because if I'm now I'm looking up, then I'm saying, usually I know my, my intervals going down. So I'm looking, if this is going up, I'm looking for generally like the fifth. We're going to look at first here. How do I look at the fifth? Well, I could say, well, the inverse of the fifth, the fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth, the inverse is 12 minus seven, which is a five note away uh, perfect fourth. So in other words, this C to the F, I might more easily see that that's a five note away perfect fourth, and therefore the inverse is a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I put, if I put that on, I could still pick up my third, which is down here, and I have my lean back F shape, so that's basically the bar chord. Or I can bar it off like this. So I have, I have that. Uh, or I can look for my, instead of the A down there, I can look for the A up here and say, now I've got boom, boom, boom. And that's gonna be, how do I know, again, how would I know that that's the third of this F? I probably would have to think of it backwards being, okay, it's, I need a four note away major third because the Lydian is a major chord that I'm trying to make and 12 minus four is eight. Uh, uh, therefore, I need an eight note away minor six distance. So in other words, if I'm looking at this, I'm looking up here to find the distance from here to here, which is an eight note away minor six, which I might say, well, here's an, Here's a, uh, well, there's an eight note away minor six going this way. And that means they're going this way. That's a three note away <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> a three note away major third, right. So then we have this distance. Okay, duh, duh, duh. okay I, think I've, I think I've broken my mind on this. Probably confused the heck out of people. So let's go to the next one. Uh, and we'll do some more of that. I'll, br I'll confuse people further. Uh, let's go to the third here. 
So now I'm back up to my Phrygian, and I'm going to look at the third of the Phrygian. So here's my E, one, two, three. So the third of a Phrygian, because the Phrygian is a minor mode, is a three note away minor third. I can see that distance as just three notes right there. The inverse is 12 minus three, which would be a nine note away major six. So if I go this way, three note away major third this way, nine note away major uh, six. Okay, I also know that the third of the Phrygian is three minus two, is, three minus one is two, plus three means it's the fifth. In other words, it's the fifth of the relative major, which tells me that I make a major chord from it because the one, four, five are what I make major chords from. But beyond that, I know it's the mixolydian mode, which I'm gonna call absolute mode number five. So, so where does mixolydian live? In the house analogy, even though it's a major scale, it's not in the house. It's outside of the house, instead living over here in the double stop part. And then in the Bell, Bar, Bell Bear hamburger analogy, I'm currently in the uh, Bell Bar, the right side of the Bell Bar where the heavy hitters are of the majors, the major and then uh, the mixolydian. Okay. So now let's. So now I'm going to say these are these are all the the chords here that basically just make up the mixolydian. So if I say I'm going to make a mixolydian chord, if I'm just playing the one three five of the mixolydian, it's just a major chord. But if I say it's a mixolydian chord with a seven, a mixolydian chord with a seven in it, then that's going to be the one that has a flat seven uh, within it because that's going to be the distinctive interval. So let's scroll down to the mixolydian just to see that. So now it's the one. I've got the color coding now so that it's the, the one, uh, one, three, five are my major three, which I'd like to fit in whatever chord I can. But if I can't get all three of those, I'll drop the five first because the three gives the flavor typically, or I'll drop the three in order to grab whatever else I want. Remembering that we have the one is equivalent to the one, the, the two is really the nine, so the two is the nine, the, the, uh, the th three, the three is the three, the four is the 11, the five is the five, and the uh, six is the, is the 13, and the seven is the seven. In other words, one, three, five, seven, and then we go back to the two, four, six when we build the chord constructions. But these are the intervals we're looking at, the distinctive interval for the mixolydian that's different than the major scale is the seventh, which has that minor seventh. That's why you get that, that uh, distinctive sound on the fifth, which is kind of like the bluesy mode. Okay, so given that, uh, we could say if I'm on this G, Normally, I would then build a lean forward shape, right? So if I leaned it forward, I'd grab first this fifth power chord. And then I'm usually looking for what I can do next, which is going to be the third, which would be a three note away minor third. So the fifth is seven notes away, five, six, seven. And then the third is going to be five uh, and then ten. Uh, so I'm going... 5, 10, 15, 16, 16 minus 12 is basically, uh, is basically 6 minus 2, which is a four note away major third. So boom, so we have that shape. I'm muting this one. All right, so then the next thing I would typically want to add is the seven. So the seven, the seven is the distinctive interval which has a minor seven. So if I so if I was looking for the seven, normally a minor seven would be like right here, but because of the kink in the tuning, it's shifted up here. So notice the shape is different than what we looked at before on the Lydian, because now we have the 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 seven is a minor seven. So you get that distinctive, more of a bluesy kind of sound, tensiony type of sound. 
So again, you, you might call that then like a dominant seven or minor seven when building the chord, when naming the chord. But I think it might, if you're work, if you're trying to build the chord, it might also be easy to call it the mixolydian with a seven in it, right? Because I'm building a mixolydian, I'm building out of the the intervals of the mixolydian, and I'm adding the seven. Which, if I know that's the distinctive one, that's the minor seven. And the reason I think that might be useful to do, like in practice, in your own mind, in my mind, that's why I'm trying to learn this, is because then whenever I learn the chord shapes and someone is like, what, what happens when you build the chords is you have the majors and the minors, and then you basically name the intervals based on the major and the minor, but the interval itself doesn't really tell you what mode you're in, which it's hard to tell if that mode fits in the key that you're playing in or not. So you get all out of whack, it seems to me. Whereas if I'm trying to stay within the same key and I say I'm playing the Mixolydian uh, chord with a seven, I'm playing the Mixolydian chord that fits into my key that has a seven in it, then I know that that seven is going to be the minor seven as opposed to the major seven. So that's what I'm, that's currently what I'm trying to mull over as possibly being useful. Uh, so in any case, <laughs> it might not, it might not end up being useful, but that's what I'm thinking right now. So that's what I'm doing. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Let's go back to uh, the two. So again, the two same shape up here. So I could build the two like I could go like boom, and then here. Like that. Right. But I'd like to build another two so I can kind of play it at the same time. So once again, we had a two up here. So I had a two like up here. So then, and I know that's a two. How would I know it's a two uh, on top? Because I could say, okay, well, well, wait a sec. There's another two uh, down here as well. So the, so the two, how do I know that? Because it's 5, uh, 10, 15, 14, 14 minus 12 is 2, right? So I have this 2, and then I could still pick up the 5th, which is here, like that. But then I, lo I lose the 3rd, which is kind of annoying, because the 3rd is is kind of important. So I could pick up the two up top. How would I know the two up top? Because I look at the inverse. So it's a, a the, it, the two is a two note away major second, 12 minus two is 10. So if I looked at the inverse, I'd say from this G, from the A to the G, that would be a 10 note away minor seven. Therefore from G to A, that's a two note away uh, major second. And then I could still grab this fifth over here. And so I have that. And I'm just muting the A open string. Or I can play the A out. And that would be playing the nine. Or I can grab this one, this one, and then this one. Do that right? I think so. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, then I can do, this is back to my normal shape. And then if I went to the 11, which is equivalent to the four, then I can say uh, the 11, the, if the four is a five note away perfect the four is usually a five note away perfect fourth, which is right underneath. So it would be the one right underneath. So if I wanted to add the four, usually I'm thinking, if I want to add the 11, usually I'm thinking about a perfect fourth interval, which is right underneath, which means I'd lose the fifth and I'd pick up maybe this, this one, and but I could still pick up this B down here. Uh, why did I want Because that's the third. No, I was doing... Yeah, so I could do like that. And 
I'm trying to mute, like I'm trying to play these two only, and then mute, mute the open B. But I could play the B, I could, I could play this E too, and that would simply be adding the 13, which is equivalent to the nine. Which is kind of like our, that's kind of like a C, that would be a, a C shape typically, but I'm looking at it with from the perspective of a G. And this is where it gets all wonky because again, once you add four notes, you could probably see it from different perspectives. You're like, well, it's like, that's a C, but I'm trying to build it off of, <laughs> I'm trying to build it off of the G, which again, gets us all turned around. So I'm like, now again, I'm in like space and time and I have no point of reference here, but I can look at it either way because I'm thinking of myself in from a mixolydian perspective in any case that's how i'm seeing it right now at least let now the lean back shape would be leaning back this way once again so that would be dun, dun, dun. one three five i can i can add another five on top which is a very convenient shape it's like my f shape which is basically the which is basically the e bar chord shape if i wanted to do the bar chord all right, let's leave it at that. Let's go back on up. Whew, man, this is draining. Let's tr let's go to the joke here before I go too much further. I gotta have to stop soon. All right, here's my practice joke. Due to my diet, I was I was losing weight slowly but surely. And yes, there's always a but. You know, there's always a but. Slowly, but surely. I, 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 I'm moving slowly, but for that cake-touting, temptress, surely. Keeps, keeps, uh, yes, I'm blaming Shirley's, Shirley here for my diet issues. It's like, but you need to take personal responsibility for your own, your own diet. It's like, well, no, it's, it's her fault. It's Shirley's fault. I'm over here going slowly, but Shirley has to bring in some kind of giant birthday cake into the office time and time again. And it's like, honestly, Shirley, do, do you know how many people work in this place? It's some stupid jerk's birthday every day for crying out loud. Yeah, not, not you though, Sam. Happy birthday. I'm just saying, like if we, if we really need to, if we really need to make progress, even slow progress, we need to we need to cut out the butts. We need to cut out the butts, man. Slowly but surely doesn't cut it. Just slowly. We're, we're moving slowly, and that's okay. Okay. That wasn't good. All right, let's go back to my. Let's go back to the fourth. Okay, so we're moving to the fourth now. So the fourth back to the Phrygian on the fourth. All right, that's the one right underneath. We know that it's a minor mode and it's like the major, it's got a five note away, uh, perfect fourth. Uh, how do I know that? Because the distance between the strings is five notes. Inverse 12 minus five, which is uh, seven, seven note away, perfect fifth. So top to bottom, five note away, perfect fourth, bottom to top, seven note away, perfect fifth. And we also know that the fourth of mode three Phrygian is three minus one is two plus four, six. So it's the sixth of the relative major scale. Here's the major scale, sixth of the relative major scale, which is, uh, I also know that that means I'm gonna make a minor chord from it because the two, three, six are minor chord constructions. Beyond that, I know it's the Aeolian mode mode number six aeolian mode where does the aeolian mode live it's not in the house in the seven note house analogy it's going to be in the double stop area and in terms of the barbell analogy it's at the bottom of the barbell on the seven note pentatonic barbell analogy now i'm going to start to say once again if i build a chord from it i can call it a minor chord which tells me it has a minor third but I'm gonna call it an Aeolian chord, which is the same as a minor chord. But beyond that, it has all of the intervals related to the Aeolian, which I could see mapped out this way. 
in terms of the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13, which is equivalent to the Aeolian scale of the 1, uh, 2 is 9, 3, 4 is 11, 5, 6 is 13, and 7. So I can look at those intervals for the Aeolian. So let's scroll down to the Aeolian uh, just to see that because now I've mapped out down here at it as the 1. So I see it mapped out here and I see the intervals based on the 1st through the 7th, remembering that the 9, 11, and 13 are equivalent to the 2, 4, and 6 on the interval constructions. So if I say I'm making an Aeolian chord, again, it's just a minor chord, but when I start adding the 7, 9, 11, and 13, I know that I'm using the minor minor intervals that way. That's the language I'm trying to get down. So I'm going to say, all right, so if I'm on this A, I'm looking at this A over here. So usually I start with a lean forward shape. That's what most people do, right? And I can grab my fifth, which is going to be up here because I still have room for that. So I'm like, okay, there's my fifth. It's up a string, however. Normally the fifth would be back here, but because of the kink and tuning, it's up here. That would be five, six, seven, note away. But then normally the third is down here somewhere, and it's not because I don't have a string. I could arpeggiate it like this. I could say, well, this is gonna be. Right, so I, but I can't play it really at the same time with that third. Now I could go up for the thirds up top, but if I'm playing like this third up here, then I probably am gonna play um, instead of that fifth. I mean, I may not need that fifth down there. I might play it differently. I could do it this way, right? Where I would be like. And I could grab this third and still and still grab that fifth, but it's gonna be hard to kind of mute the strings in between. I can kind of do it. So that's an interesting shape, you know, of the same three notes, but possibly not the most, you know, common shape. We could still do like the lean back shape from here. So if I lean back, I get this nice three note shape. Notice that now I'm on the A, and then if I go back, it looks like a major third back here, but it's now it's the minor third because of the kink in the tuning, the fault line, and then I've got my open E, which I don't have to finger. So we have that, that's nice. And then of course we have, uh, we can add to that the, uh, this note on top, which is adding another uh, fifth. So I can say that's going to be my normal A shape, which is, of course, like our bar shape. That's our normal A shape because I'm in uh, this position. If I move that shape up, I could just play these three notes and then move it up to, a, to another related, you know, minor shape if I wanted to instead of moving the entire bar up, which is uh, useful to know. Uh, let's say, let's look at this shape, our normal shape, and say, well, okay, well, how can I add maybe a 7 to it? So I'm going to call this an Aeolian shape with a 7, right? An Aeolian shape with a 7, which just means we're going to add a minor 7, because which is just like a, a minor 7, right? But I'm going to call it Aeolian as opposed to Dorian, which would still have a, min you know, a minor 7 to it. But I want to reiterate in my mind that I'm in the key of Phrygian, still thinking of myself in the key of Phrygian, playing, in essence, an Aeolian mode, which fits in the key of the Phrygian. So I'm playing an A, <laughs> Aeolian, uh, right, with, with a seven in it, right? That's, what, that's the way I'm kind of trying to think of it, so I can think of myself like in the same key is what I'm trying to do here. So there's going to be my, my seven. Uh, so where would the seven be? Well, if I, if I had... The A, normally I think of the 7 like this way. I would say, well, it would be underneath, like down here, but then it got shifted up to that G right there. So I could add that one. It's not too bad. It's kind of a reach. The problem with that is I can't really reach up with my thumb like a lot of, like, like I like to do. I'm not a classical player, so I kind of reach over with my thumb all the time. But if I put my thumb back behind the guitar and reach it this way, you could do that and if I still hit the E string that's up top that's still kind of okay because that would be the fifth right so we've got the seven there but the most common way to play the seven will most likely be that we drop the pointer here and we drop back to the open G 
move like this in open position. If I was using a bar chord, I would be doing this, and then I would drop the, the pinky, right? And I can get that open G back there. That's probably the most common way to do it. I've also got a G uh, up here. Like if I could reach way out here, that's a stretch. So I could say instead of this finger doing something like that, I might give a different sound. So now I'm like, so, but now I drop the fifth, but I'd have a fifth down below. So I could do that. I don't even really need this A if I have an open A up top, so I might try to grab that C and for whatever reason, do that shape. Might give you a different sound. Because now I have now I have the open A out here. And then I've got the C and then the G. Any case. Alright, let's try to let's go back to our normal A and say, well what if I add the nine? The nine is equivalent to the two. So if I'm playing like an Aeolian with a two in it, a minor chord with a two in it, then I could say, well, here's my A. Normally there's a two right there because it's a two note away. That's going to be hard to grab at the same time. So if I'm back to my normal shape, which is here, I could be like, okay, I could grab like that two. I could, I could reach up there maybe. That's, that's useful to know, right? I can... probably let go of this and grab it let go of this a and grab it which once again makes me have to put my thumb behind the guitar a little bit more which is going to be harder to do moving up because it's going to be harder for me to mute the top string but I could still mute this string if I didn't want to play that open a but in this case I want to play the open a in open position because I need it because I lost the a here right if I was going to move this up then then that would be messed I'd, lo I'd lose the a and that would be a problem uh, i could try to bar it off like this and i if i was still to bar i could try to reach the a out here if i wanted to move it up and then mute everything else with my finger up there so that might be still movable we'll try that later when we're on a different shape that's moved up any case let's go to the 11 which is equivalent to the four. So the four is a five note away perfect fourth. So I'm going to go Aeolian chord with an 11. So, so it's the, it, I'm calling it mode number six Aeolian chord with an 11th in it, which is equivalent to the fourth, which is, uh, which is equivalent to the fourth, which has a perfect which has a has a has a five note away perfect fourth to it, right? So if this is an A, normally I'm thinking that the perfect fourth is usually right below it, but now it's moved up because of the kink in the tuning. So now I've got like a fourth would be uh, right there. So if I played that, I'd have to drop the I'm dropping the third, which I kind of hate to do because I I could drop the third and play that. So now I need a third, so I could play like, I could go up and grab this third. So if I go up here and I grab this third, now I've got my A and I'm, and I'm adding that one below it. So I could go like, maybe I can bar that off. I'm barring these two. So that's kind of nice and I get that. doable and that's movable or this okay interesting and then the 13 if I go back to my normal shape which is like this the 13 is equivalent to the uh the sixth so i'm playing a mode number six aeolian chord with a 13th in it which is equivalent 
to the sixth, which has, because it's an Aeolian mode, an eight note away minor sixth interval. And so, so that I can look for the eight note away minor six uh, interval, which oftentimes I look back here to find. So I got one like right there. So it's eight notes away because it'd be five, 10, nine, eight. So I could bar this off, some, which is a little, and maybe play it like that. F at the bottom of it. Uh, I could play it like this to try to make sure I get it. I have an F right here. So now when I'm going up this way, it's like, okay, how do I know, how can I find it up, up this way? I could say, well, if I'm going up, I can look for the inverse. So if this is a if this is an eight note away minor six, 12 minus eight is four. So I'm looking for a four note away major third. So I'm looking for what note up top is this, the four note away major third of, obviously that would be this one because that gives me my third relationship, right? So if I remove this and I played that shape, then it's like, okay. Now when I do that, it's like, now wait a second, that looks like an F major shape, right? So, but if I'm looking at it from the perspective of the A, I've got the, th I've got the one, three, and then I added the 13. So again, that's where it gets kind of wonky. It just, it's kind of depends on my perspective as far, you know, so, you know, people might get more, might argue that, <laughs> but that's how I see it as of now, at least. Okay. So let's go back on up and say that's enough for the minor. Uh, we're on the next one is the low chord. I think I'm gonna have to stop here. My arm's getting tired. Uh, so I think I've confused myself and hopefully others thoroughly at this point. I will continue with the confusion tomorrow, maybe, probably, hopefully. No excuses. There's no buts. Unless I'll, I'll be going slowly but surely again tomorrow. But unless surely, I don't know, okay.